And we're going to be continuing here in the book, the, the True Cause, The Real Cause of Global Warming. And we are in chapter 5, and we left off on, I think it was right around page 135, Greg Kahn left off last week. And just kind of recap what he was going over, uh, what was being covered there toward the end of, toward the end of class. Um, back on page like 132, 133, uh, Pastor was, he, he made the comment, and part of one of the subheadings here is, with the increase of knowledge also came movie making. You know, within the last, you know, the, in, in, the, in, the, in this time period known as the last days when knowledge would be increased. You know, we see the, uh, the entertainment industry taking off and uh, movie making, uh, TV, movies, and things like that coming into existence, you know, the, the entertainment industry. And you've got to realize what the entertainment industry and what the movies and stuff were, were used for. And they were used for advertising and for sales. You know, and not necessarily just to sell products, as Pastor showed, but also lifestyles. You know, think about how many people watch TV and what they think that they see yeah, they, they think what they see is actually real. You know, they can't separate, but you know, they can't separate the the fact from the fantasy, so to speak. Um, if you've ever seen any movie sets or anything like that, if you've ever seen pictures of them, uh, what you what you what what you see is this big. It's the front of the building. Uh, you see the it's a facade. It's just the front of the building. But when you get around to the side. You can see the side only comes, the front only comes around to the side just a little bit. Then you see two by fours and all kinds of stilts and scaffolding and everything else holding up this facade, giving you the illusion when you're looking at it from the front that there's actually something there. You know, when you think about in that aspect of it, the, you know, the lifestyle that is sold through the entertainment industry, um, you know, and it's, it, it, is, it is exactly that. It's a facade. It's a fallacy. It's, you know, it's an illusion. You know, they're saying, you know, they, they, they try to show how, uh, you know, how violating the laws of Yahweh or doing what's right in your own eyes um, doesn't have any consequences. And that it's a much better way to live than, 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 than following the laws of righteousness. You know, but the one thing, and Pastor has showed this before, but the one thing that they fail to show is that they fail to show the consequences for their actions. They fail to show the consequences for those, for those choices that are made. Um, you know, with the, as the entertainment industry, you know, as the, with the increase of entertainment, the actual study, you know, the study and the, and the time spent in books, the time spent in uh, in just reading in general, not not just considering the, you know, not reading the, uh, not reading the holy scriptures, but just in reading in general, it just kind of drops off, because it's so much easier to sit down in front of a television, and let that just flow mindlessly into your, you know, into your mind, because it doesn't require any work. The work has been done for you. Well. The Roman Catholic Church, the church saw this, and they saw the importance of it, and this is why they established uh, a film review office uh, in the early 1900s to, um, to, to regulate what comes forth from Hollywood. And, you know, what, what comes forth from Hollywood is exactly what they want to teach. They're using it as a teaching tool. And that entertainment, again, you know, with the entertainment, with that teaching, you know, comes a reduction in the reading time and the studying of the scriptures. And, but you, on the opposite of that, you see the increase in the activity that's promoted by that same industry. And with that, you know, you see, um, you know, you see that, that pat people patterning themselves after the gods that, that are set before them. You know, they chase after that lifestyle. They want to emulate those gods. That's, that's what they're doing. They want, to, they want to pattern themselves after that. Not only in their manner of looks, but also in the way that they conduct themselves. And we know that what that does is that brings layer upon layer. Uh, you know, it brings layer upon layer of these curses that come from following this, from following this way. And it, 
adds, I mean, it continually adds to the, uh, to the number of STDs, to the number of viruses um, that not only the human body has, but also that are coming forth from those people that are infected. And it's going out into the environment. It's adversely affecting uh, everybody around them, and they don't even realize it. And it has increased to that point now where man is actually seeing the results. They're actually seeing what the, what the ultimate cause and what there's, what, you know, they're, they're seeing the results of these sins. They're starting to see these curses manifest. Because the environment cannot, the firmament can't contain it, the, um, the human bodies, they can't contain it, they can't fight against it. And so now these diseases are starting to emerge and people are getting sicker and sicker. And so is the firmament, the environment, the soil, everything. It's adversely affecting the entire world. You know, and Pastor, he, over on, on the bottom of page 134, he said, I urge scientists to test the bacteria and the viruses in the firmament and see what's raping and mutating these micro kingdoms that are our workers. Remember, the firmament was made uh, as a protection to work for mankind. And it's a protective layer that's been put about the earth. And these microorganisms are set by law to do a certain thing. And with the bacteria, with the, with the sickness that has been transferred to these microorganisms, now they can't do their job. And Pastor Schoen, so you, you know, when you go to a doctor, or when people go to a doctor and they, they say, okay, I want to be tested, you know, I want to, I want to have some tests run. And pastors brought this out before. And they say, okay, well, what are we going to test for? Because they have to test for specific things. If they don't run a test for hepatitis C, when somebody goes in for a checkup, that's not going to come back. They're not going to say, there's, not, there's nothing going to show up and say, oh, you've got hepatitis C, because they weren't looking for it. It's the same way with AIDS. It's the same way with any other uh, it's the same way with gonorrhea, herpes. It's all of these things. They have to be tested for. They have to be looked for. Well, Pastor is telling the scientists. He's telling them, I'm telling, these, I'm telling you scientists to test the bacteria and the viruses in the firmament and see what's causing these mutations in the micro kingdoms. These crippling kingdoms, that's making it very difficult now for them to do their jobs and keeping the globe cool and the supplied rain for mankind. You know, he's telling them, go test it. Look. He says to arrange to take this test in the vast ozone of high pressure in the firmament. Test the air at all levels. And look what he's telling them what to look for. Look for STDs and other damaged microorganisms. Test the ocean waters at all depths for the same thing. You know, he's telling them where to look. And you know what they're going to find when they look and they test for these things? They're going to find exactly what he's telling them to look for. And he says, he says, you know, he says, you'll see the following. Thus, high pressure in the atmosphere off the west coast and the ocean and in the atmosphere trying to cleanse itself. He says, this occurs frequently and only lasts for a short time, but the death is increasing as the STDs multiply in all geographic areas of the earth and the firmament. And this cleansing is taking longer, and eventually it's going to become impossible to clean. Man, it's like if we, you know, it's, you know, it's like if we clean our, if we clean our kitchen, as we go when we're cooking, you know, it doesn't take that long to keep everything cleaned, right? But if you're like me and want to try to dirty every pot, pan, dish in the kitchen, and then I look over and I see this, what appears to be an insurmountable thing of dishes, it's just like, oh man, it's going to take me forever to clean. You know, this is what's taking place in the, this is what's taking place in the with this area of high pressure. This is what Pastor's talking about. He says, with these STDs multiplying, you know, it's gonna take longer and longer and longer for this to for for it to clear up. But eventually it's gonna be it's gonna be overwhelmed to the point that it can't be. He says, as sin in, continues to increase, death by STDs will also increase, building up in the soil, water, and the air. He said, make these tests and you will find the real cause for the present droughts. So he's actually, you know, he's pleading with these scientists and pointing out and showing, okay, look here, test for this. Look here, test for this. 
So look for STDs such as HIV, AIDS, that rape everything they come in contact with. The micro kingdoms that produce the rain are being raped and molested to the point it's preventing them from properly performing their assigned jobs. These micro kingdoms play an important, uh, uh, as important as important a part in the cattle as the cattle kingdom. If the cows are sick, they have a difficult time producing milk. Sea life depends on the micro kingdoms to keep their habitat livable. Otherwise, they get sick, helpless, and die. When STDs attack, they do harm. That they do harm to our beneficial micro kingdoms, as we see them doing now to the micro kingdoms. Uh, the micro kingdoms suffer, and as a result, we who live off their works suffer. Notice this final article here from biologynews.net, and this is called Gonorrhea Acquires a Piece of Human DNA. It says if a human cell and a bacterial cell, it says, met at a speed dating event, they would never be expected to exchange phone numbers, much less genetic material. In more scientific terms, a direct transfer of DNA has never been recorded from humans to bacteria. Never been recorded until now. Northwestern Medicine researchers have discovered the first evidence of a human DNA fragment in a bacterial genome, in this case, the bacterium that causes gonorrhea. Further research shows that gene transfer appears to be a recent evolutionary event, it's something that just recently took place. Now, the great Kahanya Didion, when he was speaking, I remember him one time talking about these viruses and these bacteria, and he referred to them as shape changers because they change and they mutate. As their environment changes, they change so that they, could, so that they can survive in that environment. And that's what we're seeing here. This discovery offers insight to evolution as well as to gonorrhea's nimble ability to continually adapt and survive in its human host. And that's what it's doing. It's trying to survive. It says gonorrhea, which is transmitted through sexual contact, is one of the oldest recorded diseases and one of the few exclusive to humans. It has revolutionary significance evolutionary significance because it shows that you can take a broad evolutionary steps when you're able to acquire these pieces of DNA. This bacterium is getting a genetic sequence from the very host that it's infecting. Okay, so it's able to, it's actually able to get, uh, you know, get pieces of the genes from the, uh, from the humans. That could have far-reaching implications as far as how the bacteria can adapt to the host. It is known that gene transfer occurs between different bacteria and even between bacteria and yeast cells. But the human, but human DNA to bacterium is a very large jump. It says this bacterium had to overcome several obstacles in order to acquire this DNA sequence. And it says the finding suggests gonorrhea's ability to acquire DNA from its human host May enable it to develop. It may enable it to develop new and different strains of itself. And when it does that, when it develops these new strains, guess what the pharmaceutical companies have to do now? Now they have to work on finding another drug, and that takes time. And it takes money. It takes time. And by the time they get something that they perceive will, fi will, uh, will fix the problem, this thing has already changed, evolved three, four, or five more times. So it's a, it's a, it's a never-ending never cycle. They're never going to get it. They're never going to get caught up to it. Every year, an estimated 700,000 people in the United States and 50 million worldwide acquire gonorrhea. And pastor shows here, he says, we know for sure what is defiling the earth. The soil, the water, and the firmament is caused by sin. No doubt whatsoever. Says, and he says, burning gas, oil, or coal is not a sin. What we see in the previous article concerning gonorrhea is taking place in the micro kingdoms. Gonorrhea is caused by sinful acts, as, as, as are the many other STDs. That is what your Bible says is causing the defilement of the earth and its inhabitants. Okay, and we've read this scripture a multitude of times throughout this article, throughout this book. And so it should be getting pretty well ingrained into our, into our minds about what this article, about what this particular scripture is telling us. In Isaiah 24, 1 through 6, it says, Before Yahweh's very eyes, the earth is made empty. Now, you know, it wasn't created that way. When Yahweh created the earth, it was perfect. The earth was perfect. 
but it was made empty and it was made waste and it was and the the face of it is perverted and its inhabitants are scattered abroad you know the uh the uh the uh, it's it's perverted now i looked up the word perverted in in Gesenius, and you can see you can see what they're what it's talking about here see if i can zoom in on it here a little bit maybe no it helps if i push the right button okay Maybe one more. Ah, there we go. Okay. So you can see here this word, what this word pervert means. It means to twist. It means to distort. It means to act perversely. You know, it's, it's, and, and it's, it says to act perversely or to sin. And, you know, it says the face of it, you know, the face of it, um, the face of it is perverted. Um, you know, this is what the inhabitants have done. They've acted perversely. They've caused, they've, they've turned to sins. To be distorted, to writhe with pains and spasms. So you look at the, the, the cause, you look at what these things are causing. You know, these STDs, these sicknesses and these diseases, you know, the earth is groaning as, 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 as other scriptures show that the earth, the, the earth groans because of the defilement that has been brought to it. So you can see it's actually writhing, it's, it's distorted, it's writhing with pain, it's writhing in these spasms. It means to be bowed. To be depressed, to be depressed by calamities. Look at the other things that are brought about. Look at what the, the, the global warming, look at what it has caused. Look at the irregular weather patterns. You know, the, it's, been, it's brought about these calamities. Um, it's uh, um, to, it, it, to, be, to, be, to be bowed or to be bowed, to be depressed by calamities. You know, look at the, look at the depression. Cred, just look at the depression, the depression that's in the world. I mean, how many, how many, uh, you know, commercials and stuff are on TV or on the radio about anti-depression medication? Bunches of it. And the side effects of this stuff may cause suicidal thoughts. Well, you know, I mean, what's up with that? It's supposed to be helping with those things, but yet these are the side effects of, this is what the sorceries, you know, uh, the, the sorceries, this is what the results are. You know, they cause more damage. A lot of times they, they cause more damage than anything. But it means to, to, uh, to per, whoa. It means to, uh, it means to per pervert, to subvert, to pervert, to subvert, or to overturn, to make crooked. You know, to make crooked. Remember that they, they, they take that straight and narrow way. That way that leads into the kingdom. And they have twisted that way. They've perverted that way. And they've got mankind convinced that they can do whatever they want to and still enter into the kingdom. They can still have eternal life. You know, this is how, this is how that this way is perverted. And that convincing argument, that convincing argument has people convinced in their minds that they can continue to do what they're doing and they are so, they are quote unquote, they're saved. But the phase of it is perverted and the inhabitants are scattered abroad. And then verse two shows it will be as with the people, so with the priests, with the servants and with the owners. It shows that there's no people that are left untouched here. Verse three shows that that land will be utterly emptied and utterly plundered for it has come to pass that this judgment has been pronounced. You know, the judgments have been pronounced for the violation of the law. The, 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 you know, the consequences for violating the laws are already laid out. They're laid out. The blessings, the benefits that come from keeping this law are laid out. The curses or the consequences, the judgments that come forth are laid out. And these judgments have been pronounced. They were pronounced in the beginning. The earth mourns and fades away, and the earth, the world mourns and fades away, and the haughty people of the earth languish. The haughty people? Haughty. That word haughty means blatantly and disdainfully proud, or having or showing an attitude of, of, of uh, superiority and contempt for people or things perceived to be inferior. Not that they are, but it's what they perceive to be inferior. And some other words that tie in with that, I've got them listed down there. Proud, 
which may suggest an assumed superiority or loftiness, you know, lifting oneself up. Arrogant implies claiming for oneself of more consideration or more importance than is warranted. Haughty suggests a conscientious, uh, conscientiousness of superior birth or position. Next one, look at that one. Lordly. Lordly implies pompous. Uh, how's that? What is that? Pompous, pompous city. Pompous city. Being pompous or being a, or an arrogant display of power. Insolent implies contempt, contemptuous, uh, uh, haughtiness. Um, and it, uh, overbearing suggests a tyrannical manner or an intolerable insolence. So I want you to think of this beastly system that's out there. And you can see that, this, that, that these words accurately describe this beastly system. You know, the arrogant, they pro proclaim themselves, uh, uh, you know, uh, to be of more consideration or of more important. Uh, you know, they're pompous or they have an arrogant display of power. And we're going to see, you know, Yahweh willing, we're going to see that here in, just a, here in just a little bit. But think about what the Roman Catholic Church did in doing away with the Sabbath. The arrogance and the pompousness that they used and, the, and the, just that insolence that they used when they said, we changed it because we could. You know, it doesn't say in the scriptures anywhere that to, to move the, to change the day of worship from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week, but we did it. You know, you can see the, you can see the arrogance. You can see, you know, you can see how that, you know, how that word haughty fits in there, but you see the, the overbearing, the tyrannical manner or the insul, uh, intolerable insolence. You know, you see that throughout the entire world, you know, with, you know, in the anger and everything else that's, um, you know, that the nations are displaying. It's because the laws of Yahweh aren't taught. And they're learning the ways of war. Just like, just, just like Isaiah 2, 2 and Micaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter 2 and Micaiah chapter 4 shows. Now, some opposite words to that haughty, of course, are humble, lowly, modest, Unarrogant or unpretentious. Okay, so you know, and this is everything that being humble, being lowly, being modest, being unpretentious. This is the pattern that Yahweh. This is the pattern of life that Yahweh wants us to live. This is the pattern of life that we are striving to attain ourselves, to be made in the image and likeness of Yahweh. That's what we're doing. We're not following. The, the way of the world. We're not following this entertainment industry, the gods that are set before this world. You know, we're not following that way, but you can see how, you can see how these things are all, they're all being done. But the haughty people of the earth, those people are the ones that languish. You know, they're, you know, they're, you know, they are going to be the ones languishing. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants of it because they, it's because the inhabitants of the world because they've transgressed the laws, they've changed the ordinances, and they've broken the everlasting covenant. And because that they've done this, the curses devour the earth, and they who dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. You know, because they did this, the curses devour the earth. And everybody remembers, um, everybody remembers Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2, right? Praise Yahweh. A curse causeless will not come. So we can see the reason the curses are coming, and this is exactly what Isaiah was showing here. Because they transgressed the laws, because they did those things, this is why the curses are coming upon the earth. Okay, there's a cause and effect there. But the religion here, Pastor, shows that changed Yahweh's laws is located on seven hills and is still filling the earth, still filling the earth, soil, water, and the heavens with STDs. In Revelation 17, 1 through 7, 9, and 18, and there came one of the seven Malachim who had seven bowls and talked with me, saying, Come, and I will show you the sentence of this great whore that sits upon many waters. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, they practice idolatry and God worship, the worship of Elohim, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. You know, you think about it. Drunkenness is confusion. And this is exactly what fornication, physical fornication, causes. These STDs and these diseases get, diseases get into the body, they short-circuit the brain, they short-circuit the mind, and they cause this confusion. 
the confusion that comes forth from the earth, from the, from the uh, from this uh, from this woman that sits on seven hills and her daughters, her harlots, you know these daughters saying, "Oh, you don't have to keep the laws of Yahweh. You can just do whatever you want to do. Do what's right in your own eyes. Do what's pleasing in your own sight." The entire world has been convinced that this is the way to salvation, and they're confused. See. They're confused from these teachings because they've had it. They, they've been told, well, these preachers for years, you know, we've been told, you know, these preachers for years, you know, I've been told I can trust the priest. I can trust the preacher. I can trust them because they are men of God and the men of God don't lie. And that has been drilled in from their youth up. And now they get something that's contrary to what they've been taught all their life. And they say, well, Surely the whole world can't be wrong. Well, Revelation 12, 9 says, oh, yes, they are. Now, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe what that person over there says? Or are you going to believe what the inspired scriptures show? Therein lies the battle. Therein lies the, the, uh, um, the, you know, the wrestling with the carnal mind. Yeah, so... But Yahweh brings to his house those whom he wants. And everybody that comes to Yahweh's house, you know, Yahweh has brought each and every man, woman, and child here that he wants in his kingdom. That's plain and simple. He's brought everyone here that he wants, and he will continue to bring them. And it's just a matter of it's just a matter of how bad do we want it? Do we want to stay? Or are we going to turn to someone other than the one who has been set aside to teach us, who are we going to listen to? You know, the world will tickle your ears. You know, but, but with that tickling, you know, with that tickling of the ears, you know, that's, uh, you know, that tickling will only last for a while until something comes back to bite you. And it will. It absolutely will. But verse 3 here shows, So he carried me away in the spirit in the midst of the God worshippers, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, and having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. So you can see that she appears, oh, you know, the, you know on the outside appears, oh, so wonderful, oh, so, you know, look how beautiful. This is surely righteousness comes from this place. And look at that beautiful cup that's sitting right there on the table. But inside, look what was inside that cup. You know, having a cup in her hand that's full of, uh, full of this filthiness of the fornication. You know, it's hidden. It's hidden inside. It's hidden from sight. And upon her head was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Now notice that. Notice what, what, notice what we're told here. The mystery Babylon the Great. This is what she does. The mother of the harlots. So she's the mother of all of the churches. Notice, notice what else she is the mother of. She is also the mother of all the abominations on the earth. You know, this mystery Babylon the Great, this is the same agency that Cain represented. The exact same agency. Under different leadership, or under under a different spokesman at this time, but still the same agency. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahshua. And when I saw her, I wondered with great astonishment. You know, this being drunk with the blood of the saints. You know, this is through the, the through, you know through the Crusades that took place. And remember, Pastor told us the Crusades were just one continuous war. You know, they had the Crusades of the Middle Ages, which started taking place, I think it was around the 1100 and went through like 1300 AY, somewhere around there. And that was known as the Crusades of the Middle Ages. But the Crusades, remember what they were. There was a continual war against any form of holiness and righteousness. So anyone who would practice any of those things, they had these Crusades, these wars waged against them to wipe them out. And that began with that agency that Cain represented killing Abel. And it continues, it's continuing through today. So it's a continual war. This, continuous, this continual war, this curse of following the way of Cain is this continual war of vengeance and retaliation 
wandering to and fro, ever searching for peace. This is what this is what this way of Cain. This is what this the this way brings. But the Malak said to me, Why are you astonished? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. And here is the mind which has wisdom. Notice it's hidden from those who don't have wisdom. The proverb shows us how we attain wisdom, right? How do we attain wisdom? Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. The reverence of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. You know, first, you know, you know, first comes obedience. Remember, first comes obedience, then comes the understanding. You know, we prove ourselves obedient, and then this wisdom will follow. You know, the, here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which this woman sits. And the woman who you saw is that great city, that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. You know, um, and, and Pastor has, has pointed out many different times the news articles have shown. We've seen the written news, news articles. We've seen the video of these various world leaders going and meeting with the spokesman who sits at this great city, the city of seven, sits on seven hills. And to go and get advice and then to leave. And then the next person comes in and back and forth. But look at Revelation 18, 1 through 5. And after these things I saw another Moloch come down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was enlightened with his glory. Now, remember, Pastor, remember we showed that this is actually speaking of the seventh Moloch in these last days that is doing these things. I saw this Moloch come down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was enlightened with his glory. And we're going to see how this was mistranslated and we're going to get into that as we begin this next chapter here and just Yahweh willing here in just a little bit. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of demons and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Notice verse 3, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. You know, not only the, the physical teacher, the, the physical submission to this fornication, uh, the physical acts of, of, of fornication, uh, sodomy, bestiality, all of these things, but also the spiritual fornication of practicing iniquity, of pushing aside the laws of Yahweh. You know, they're suffering from those things as well, which they're all, they're all go hand in hand. They all tie together. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth, earth have grown rich through the abundance of her delicacies. We're getting ready to enter into the 10th Roman month. The, the, the night of the 31st of this 10th Roman month is probably one of the most profitable days for merchants out of the entire year, that they say. There is so much money that is made on that day, in preparation for that day and for, for the celebration of that day, than, you know, than any other. But you see, the merchants grow rich through the abundance of these delicacies, delicacies, through the abundance of this fornication, through the abundance of this God worship. Because you know the retailers, uh, they, they survive and they live from one pagan holiday to the next, right? You can see the cycle. You know, you can see the cycle. It, you know, it's, uh, you know, it started last, last Roman month, you know, you can say, actually, probably this one here. You see them getting ready for this Halloween. Well, if you go now, they've got stuff set up for, for, their, for their Christmas holidays. They've already got that stuff set up. And probably next month or the month after that, sometime in the 11th Roman month, probably the 12th Roman month, then they'll start getting stuff out for their big holiday that comes up in, in, uh, in February. You know, in that second Roman month. That Valentine's Day, and it just goes on. Then it goes on to the worship of the of the of the of the, of the, uh, uh, of the goddess Ishtar. That's going to be the next one, and the and the and the and the celebration of the 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 rabbit that goes around laying these eggs. You know, it just goes on and on and on. But they but they pattern themselves after that, and the entertainment industry pushes it right along too, because those things are pushed as well. 
And so we see all nations have drunk from the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth, again, we always see the, the merchants have grown rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And don't forget to include the pharmaceutical industries along with this. Because along with this, practicing this, these God worship, along with practicing this fornication and idolatry and things along that line, people are getting sick and they're running to the doctor saying, hey, take this pain away from me so I can continue to practice these things. And before you know it, you're on three, four, five, six, eight, ten different medications. All the while begging to have the pain from these sins taken away while you go out and while they go out and they continue to commit these things, they continue to spread these things and continue to make the situation around everyone, including themselves, worse and worse and worse. And this is getting to be the state now that the earth is in. Man, you can think just recently, you know, just, just think of how the climate has changed in the past four or five years. I mean, just think about it. Look, you know, just look back and see how the seasons don't even change like they're supposed to anymore. Some of you men that are older probably remember growing up, there were distinct four seasons. You could, you could distinguish between fall, between winter, between spring and summer. I mean, they, I mean you could tell. Now it's just like it just goes from, from winter right into summer, eh, not so much in the middle. But it's all as a result. It's all as a result of these sins. It's all as a result of this. But we're told to come out, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Don't partake in this lifestyle. This lifestyle is causing nothing but, nothing but problems. Live the way your owner's manual, your, the Holy Scriptures tell you to live. The creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that created you, gave you, gave us a manual of how to properly maintain our bodies and the environment around us. And if we follow that manual, then we've got nothing to worry about. Nothing, and, 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 but it's because that manual has been cast aside that we see these things. But we're to come out from this lifestyle saying, come out of her, my people, so that you do not partake in her sins, that you don't receive of her plagues. Notice, for her sins have reached into heaven, and Yahweh has remembered her iniquities. But notice here, the evidence in, is in the vast ozone, or vast zone of high pressure in the atmosphere off the west coast. It's nearly four miles high and 2,000 miles long. I'm praying to Yahweh at this, at this, at that, this time. Now notice that. I am praying to Yahweh that this time... You know, this isn't the first time pastors told him. He's told them before. But I'm praying to Yahweh that this time all you scientists will find what you're looking for, the real cause of these droughts. Drought prompts disaster declarations in nine states. And this is from 2014, so it's about four years ago, a little over four years ago. Federal officials have designated portions of 11 drought-ridden western and central states as primary natural disaster areas, highlighting the financial strain and the lack of rain that is likely to bring the farmers uh, bringing the lack of rain is likely to bring to farmers in those regions, and they list these different states here: uh, primary states of primary concern. Uh, um, I just had it here. Oh, okay, there it is. Um, in Colorado, New Mexico, Nevada, Kansas, Texas, Utah, Arkansas, Hawaii, Idaho, Oklahoma, California. It says while storms have dumped rain and snow in the east. Droughts are, pers are persisting or intensifying in the West. A ridge of high pressure is to blame for keeping the storms off the Pacific coast and guiding them to the East. What we're seeing meteorolo meteorolo meteorologically is a blocking pattern which is deflecting all of the storms. There really hasn't been a lot of indication of this pattern breaking down. Okay? It's not breaking down. It's, it's not going to break down. It's going to continue to grow worse. Pastor shows here, he says, I know the prophecies of Yahweh are 100% accurate. And they show so many details that have been fulfilled. The problem in this generation is that all religions have stopped studying the scriptures. And the majority of the people have turned to practicing sin. The practice of sin creates and mutates harmful microorganisms that bring forth the defilement of the body, soil, water, and air. 
It seems as if the Earth's elements are actually trying to drive out mankind, but in actual fact, the Earth is only trying to clean up the mess that mankind is causing. So that's what the Earth is trying to do. But there's an excerpt over here, and we're going to read this here real quick before we get into chapter 6. But this excerpt from the sermon given by Yisrael Hawkins on 8-11 of, uh, of 2012, and it's entitled, The Microorganisms That Make Up the Firmament Are Sick from STDs from Mankind. And this was in 2012 that this was written. And Pastor shows here, he says, uh, NOAA, that is the no National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, say that this is scientifically proven now that the droughts are caused by man, that global warming is caused by man. Okay, they know it. It says, the firmament that Yahweh made to protect and feed the earth, to feed mankind, to protect mankind, to give him just enough sunshine, just enough rain, but not too much rain. Everything is governed by the firmament that comes to mankind. You think about that. You think about how it regulates the sun, how it regulates how much radiation gets to the, you know, from the sun, gets through the firmament to us. It's just the right amount, exactly what we need. We've got to have those things from the sun, from the moon, from the stars, and from the firmament. He set kingdoms, billions of micro kingdoms in the firmament to govern this. Now, when I first brought out, brought that out in 2007, they laughed at us. Remember? I remember, I remember the ridicule, we, and it was shown, you know, it was shown here, the, uh, uh, the, the news articles where, uh, where the people were laughing and snickering and sneering and just, you know, just, just the, the contempt that they showed. You know, the contempt that they showed, and they just dismissed it. Didn't even think, well, you know, maybe there is something to this. You know, but that was, you know, but that was, but that's what they did. They would snicker. They said that the STDs are causing global warming. Ha, 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 ha. Well, some scientists come in behind us, and now they're saying the same thing. I think I have one of those articles, the microbes make the best climate engineers. And in that article, Pastor showed where these tiny micro microbes have been modifying our climate. And it says in here for billions of years, but we know the earth isn't that old. Uh, and it says, and unless we learn how to work with them, we could, be, we could be fighting a losing battle to get our greenhouse emissions under control. And well, mankind is not working with these microorganisms. Remember the new moon film we saw? The, what, the, what are they trying to do? They're forcing. They're trying to force these microorganisms. They're trying to force these genes. They're trying to force these things to do things they were never meant to do. And in doing so, they're causing problems. You remember that, that, one, that, uh, that one thing that they showed about, the, at, um, um, about putting, they, they put this virus inside this, um, 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 this, bi this bi I think they called it a bionet is what they called it. And they grew this bionet. And they had this virus that was in there. And there. the idea that they have in their mind is, oh, we can implant this into somebody's, into somebody's body to fight radiation sickness. And this bionet is going to keep the bad stuff in and only let the decent stuff out. You know, that's that, that's that perceived control. Mankind's delusional. Okay, they think they have control of these things. They think they have control over, over, over viruses, over bacteria. You know, just the fact that they have STDs that are incurable should give them an idea. They should have a clue that we don't have control over anything. But, you know, they, delu they have that delusion, that ongoing, ongoing delusion in their minds. Just like, just like they say, oh, we've got, you know, we've got nuclear reaction under control. We've got this nuclear fission, nuclear fu fusion. We've got these processes under control. No, they don't. It's a perceived control. That's all it is. Remember the story Pastor gave about, told about, I can't think of the man's name, it was Charlie Hip or something like that. He had that lion, and he, he had that lion, and he had that lion tamed. Remember that? The lion was only tamed as long as that lion wanted to be tamed. Remember, because, because Pastor show, you know, you know, shared the story where the lion got, got uh, uh, 
don't know, don't remember everything about it, but he wound up tearing the inside of that man's station wagon to pieces, remember? But yet, that animal was under control. Was that animal under control? Absolutely not. See, mankind does not have control over anything. They can manipulate things, but they're not under control. They don't have these things under control. And this article shows, it says, we need to learn how to work with these microorganisms. Well, men, in doing what we're doing here, in learning and practicing righteousness, in striving to take on Yahweh's perfect righteous character, you realize that we're beginning to, we are showing uh, to the witnesses, these great cloud of witnesses, to heaven and earth. And that includes the micro kingdoms that make up the heavens and the earth. That we can be trusted. We're proving to them that we're not going to misuse this power. That we're not going to misuse the authority. Remember that the remember that we're, part of that word uh, in the haughty, being the haughty people of the earth. Remember, part of that word was being uh, overbearing, which su suggested a tyrannical manner. You know. Um, a con you know. Another one was contemptuous. Was that the arrogance? You know this. Uh, you know, using you know using these things for not for the benefit of others. That is what we are proving when we submit to the laws of Yahweh, and we're proving that too, not only to heaven, not only to earth, not only to Yahweh, not only to Yahshua, not only to the last day's witness, not only to our brothers and sisters, but to the very microorganisms, the micro kingdoms that make up everything that we see and that's what we are proving and this is how you know our being converted and being made into the image and likeness of Yahweh is how we're going to be given that authority you know once we are converted and completely converted and we are made into that image and likeness of Yahweh. These microorganisms, these micro kingdoms, are know that we can be fully trusted. And that is something, I mean, that is just, that's an awesome thing when you really think about it. And it's really, it should be a motivating factor for each and every one of us, you know, in studying and cramming for a job like no other that is being offered, that has been offered to anyone throughout all eternity. You think about it. You think about that job that is being that job that's being offered. I've seen jobs and stuff where they say, "Oh, there's study material available." You know, if you really want this job, you study for it. Well, they give you a book that's this thick, and they say, "Okay, study for it." Then we're going to quiz you on it and see how well you do. But you know, we're being trained every day, every hour of the day. We have the ability to be trained, and we're being tested. We have pop quizzes that come up continuously to see how well we're learning the material, how well we're applying the material. And you know what? There's times we're going to fail a pop quiz. We're going to fail it miserably, just like we did in school. And I didn't study it. I didn't apply that. I didn't think about that. I, I missed that. Well, that's what these pop quizzes are for. That's what we're dealing with when, when, we, have, you know, when we have our challenges that come up when we have differences with our brothers, when we have difficulties at home with our families, you know, when we have difficulties in dealing with situations with supervisors or whatever, it doesn't matter. The thing is, man, that we recognize, yep, I messed that one up. Now let me see how I can improve on it. And that's the purpose. And that's why, you know, when we're tested, when, when these tests come upon us, you know, we, you know, they are, you know, it, 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 it can be a, yes, no test seems pleasant going through it at the time. You know, but we can use, but we can use it as a learning experience. Say, okay, yeah, I know where I messed up. Now let me apply that. Or when we successfully get through a test. Yes, that worked. Now I know how to deal with this when it comes up again. You know, it's a confidence builder when we do well, right? When we handle something right. So... That's what, we're, that's what we're doing. You know, we're studying and we're proving to these micro kingdoms, yes, we know that the state that the world is in and we don't, want to, we don't ever want to get this, for this to get into that state again. And we're going to do everything in our power to see that that doesn't take place. And men, that's why we're here. That's what we're studying for. But well, 
as we warm the planet, and he pastor says here, he says, in fact, unless we deeply understand how these microbes do their work, we might be fighting a losing battle to control climate change. Mankind is fighting a losing battle. They're not going to fix it. The laws of Yahweh are going to fix it. The house of Yahweh is going to fix it. The last day's witness is going to fix it, and along with all of us, are part of the solution to fix these problems. Well, they know this now. They know what we put out there is the truth. Well, where we got ours was from the great wisdom of Yahweh who made the earth and put mankind on it. He gave him certain laws to follow. He created a firmament. And then he also made, man, made it for mankind to take care of mankind. What is taking place in the micro kingdoms right now of the firmament is the mutations can't do the work, is the mutations they can't do the work that the original microbes were designed to do. The original microbes were designed to create raindrops and to make those raindrops fall in a fashion slowly where, where, where the water, it would water the earth without floods and without great floods. But now you see torrential downpours or you don't see anything at all. It says the microbes, pastor says here, the critters as they call them in the earth are put there to clean the earth and the firmament. And they're in confusion. They don't know what to do. It's like they've been given conflicting instructions. The same confusion that we see among the people here at this time, everyone's hand is against the hand of his brother. It's what's taking place in the micro kingdoms. You know, the, 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 the nation against nation, the kingdom against kingdom, you know, they're, they we're seeing the same thing taking place in the micro kingdoms, in the firmament, and in the earth at this time. You can't see it, but there's wars going on right now in the earth trying to fight off what man has created from its uncontrolled lust, from sodomy being the worst thing, the worst creation of this meth mess that we see. So that was from 8th Roman month of 2012 and now we're going to go ahead we'll get into chapter 6 here we'll get it started at least. In chapter 6 here on page 139 chapter 6 her sins have reached have reached into the heavens so her sins have reached into in Revelation 18, Yahweh identifies the Vatican with its Catholic or universal religion that sets and governing the kings and the leaders of the earth. Yahweh shows that her sins have reached into the heavens. The word translated heavens actually means the firmament. Okay? And this is the same word that is used in Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. And we see here where Yahweh said, Let there be a firmament, an expanse between the waters, and let there be a separation between the waters from the waters. So Yahweh made the firmament of the expanse, and he separated the water under the firmament, the expanse from the water above it, and it was so. And Yahweh called the firmament, or the expanse, sky, and the evening and then the morning were the second day. There are several words in Revelation 18, 1 through 5, that were mistranslated. Others were completely left out of most translations. Now notice the following from the authorities of the Hebrew and Chaldee languages in the Hebrew and Chaldee lexicons. And so Revelation 18, 1 through 5, we'll read how it's, uh, how it's currently translated. And then we're going to see where the, the mistranslations are and then the corrected version for them. Revelation 18, 1 through 5, it says, After these things I saw another Molech come down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was enlightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of demons and the hold of every foul, uh, the foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you do not partake of her sins, and that you do not receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached into heaven, and Yahweh has remembered her iniquities. Okay? Now, the following words are mistranslated in Revelation 18.1 as shown by the following Hebrew and Chaldee authorities. Now, notice this is, these come from the Hebrew and Chaldee authorities. Gesenius Hebrew and Chaldee lexicon shows the word Moloch means one cent, messenger of Yahweh. Um, the Hebrew Aramaic English Dictionary by Marcus Jastro shows that this word means teacher, Abel. And a Hebrew Chaldee lexicon of the Old Testament by Julius I shows it means priest. The word heaven is translated from the Hebrew word shem according to the Hebrew and Chaldee lexicon of the Old Testament on page 1402, and it means Yahweh. The word earth from the Hebrew word 
Eretz means this world, according to a Hebrew and Chaldee lexicon of the Old Testament on page 153. The word enlightened, we see, means truth and revelation. The word glory means he who honors the law means Yisrael. It says this is found in the Hebrew Aramaic English Dictionary on pages 606 and 607. In Revelation 18.5, the word heaven is translated uh, uh, from, the, from the word shamim, and it means heavens, that is, the firmament. And this is found in the uh, Gesenius Hebrew and Chaldea lexicon on page 1083. So we see here, so we see here the correct translation as it should have been, according to these, uh, the Hebrew and Chaldea authorities, shows, and after these things I saw at Abel a priest, a teacher, the one sent from Yahweh, and he had great authority, for the whole world was revealed the truth by Israel, who, re who reverenced Yahweh and his laws. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of demons, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And verse 3 shows, And for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and all of the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, And the merchants of the earth have grown rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you do not partake of her sins, and that so you do not receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached into the firmament, and Yahweh has remembered her iniquity. So you can see how correctly that should have been translated. You know, and the proof is, the proof is right there. It's right there. This isn't, this isn't something that Pastor is saying. This is what these men... This is what Jastro has said. This is what uh, Julius I has said. This, was, this is what they have said. Not Pastor or anybody else. Okay? And it was from the Hebrew and Chaldean languages that part two of the book of Yahweh was originally translated. So it was originally translated from the Hebrew and Chaldean languages. And of course, those who are, not, those who are deceived call this the New Testament, and it's not a New Testament. And this is clearly shown in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16, which shows this covenant, this is the covenant that I will renew with them after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. This same perfect covenant established, this is the same perfect covenant that was established from the very beginning. It's not new. It was simply renewed. Only deceiving religious leaders who love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil, would try to change Yahweh's righteousness. Okay, and Yachanan chapter uh, 3 verse 19 says, Now this is condemnation, that light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light, because their, e their, their deeds were evil. And second, Yachanan 1 6, And this is love, that we walk after his laws, you know, that we conduct ourselves, that we pattern ourselves after this perfect way of life, after these laws. And those are the laws that you've heard from the beginning that you should walk in them. See, there's no new ones, but it's the ones that they've had from the beginning. First Yachanon 3, 10 through 11. In this, the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of Yahweh, and he does not love his neighbor. For this is the message that you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And pastor says, did you catch that? Verse 10 says, if the churches do not practice righteousness, they do not belong to Yahweh. And righteousness is practicing the laws of Yahweh, as we see there in Deuteronomy 6.25, uh, 1 Yachanan chapter 3, verse 4 and verse 7, uh, shows that whoever commits sin transgresses also the laws, for sin is the transgression of the law, and that little children let no man deceive you, because deception has gone out into this world. He who practices righteousness, he who practices keeping the laws of Yahweh is righteous just as he is righteous, okay? So this is why, men, that we have to have, you know, we have to have this firm foundation in the, in the basic. And we have a tendency, men, when we've been here for a while, we have a tendency to, to uh, take these things for granted. You know, we have a tendency to take the basic doctrines for granted. You know, we need to rehearse you know, kind of, you know, rehearse, you know, go back through and, and brush up on the, you know, you know, which day is which day is the Sabbath? You know, which day is the Sabbath of the New Testament? Uh, why aren't your prayers answered? 
you know, we need to go back through and brush up on those things because it's those things that these two billion are going to be coming to us. And we have to be well versed and we need to have those things fresh in our minds so that we can go over those with them and be able to be able to, to, to get those get that message across to them that this is why. You know, this is why we do these things. This is where this is wrong. This is where the, the system that you came from, this is where they're wrong. This is where you're wrong in your thinking that you need to worship on Sunday. This is where you were lied to. You know, this is all part of the lies that your preacher taught you. And everything that this world has been taught by these religions, you know, is a lie. So, with that, man, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop here. We'll uh, stop at the bottom of page 40. Uh, the Great Khan will take up there next time. So with that, men, may Yahweh be with you and bless you. May Yahweh bless your efforts in preparation for the great Feast of Tabernacles, which begins tomorrow evening at sunset. So praise Yahweh.